This is Sam Sark, in this video we are looking at the American Revolution. And firstly, what we will look at is the rising tensions before the American Revolution, and this was mainly based around tax, because the British government started to attempt to raise their revenues by taxing the colonies. So for example, in 1765, there was the Stamp Act, and this was signed into law by George III, and it was a tax to be placed upon printed documents, including legal papers, contracts, wills, and magazines. Now, it was repealed in March 1766, but it did have the effect of raising the tensions within the colonies. Then there was a Townsend Act, and that was in 1767, and this was a series of laws passed by the British government which placed new taxes and took away some of the freedoms of the colonists, and this included a tax on tea. Then in 1770, there was the Boston Massacre, and this was colonial resistance led to violence, and the British responded by firing on the mob of colonists, and they killed five of them. And then there was Boston Tea Party 1773, and this is because angry colonists, who were angry at the recent tax increases, dumped 342 chests of British tea into the harbour. So this led to the Coercive Acts, which later known as the Intolerable Acts, and these acts included closing Boston Harbour until the tea loss was paid for, it ended the Massachusetts Constitution and ended free elections of town officials, and it moved judicial authority to Britain and British judges, basically creating martial law. Now, all the colonies viewed these as evidence of British tyranny, and they started to plot further resistance. So, in June 1775, the Second Continental Congress declared the Continental Army. And this had the objective of coordinating the military efforts of the 13 colonies, and it was led by George Washington. So one of the first battles of the American Revolutionary War took place on June 17, 1775, under the name of the Battle of Bunker Hill. Now although this was a strategic victory for the British because they managed to capture Charlestown Peninsula, it also gave hope to the revolutionary forces because they had managed to inflict large numbers of casualties upon the British, and that was around a thousand compared to their 450. Now by June 1776, with the Revolutionary War fully underway, the majority of the colonists now favoured independence, and on July the 4th, 1776, the Continental Congress voted to adopt the de Declaration of Independence, and this was mainly the work of Thomas Jefferson. So in order to suppress the rebellion, the British government sent a large fleet, along with 34,000 troops to New York. And in the resulting Battle of Long Island in August, the British commander William Howe was able to defeat the Continental Army and capture both New York City and Long Island, so this meant that Washington was forced to evacuate his troops from New York City. The Colonials were able to win a small battle at Princeton at the start of 1777 though, which did keep alive their hopes of independence. But it was the Battle of Saratoga which has often been seen as the turning point of the war. As throughout 1777, the British hoped to separate New England from the other colonies because the rebellion enjoyed popular support in New England. So this meant that they adopted a two-pronged attack under both General John Burgoyne and William Howe. So Burgoyne was able to retake Fort Ticonderoga in July 1777, whilst Howe decided to move his troops southward to, from New York. Now in the south, he was able to defeat the Americans at Brandywine Creek in Pennsylvania on September the 11th, and then enter Philadelphia on September 25th. How this manoeuvre had left Burgoyne's army exposed near Saratoga, which is in New York. Burgoyne was able to achieve a small tactical victory over General Horatio Gates, and Gates had recently just taken over from General Philip Shulia in August, and that was due to the American worsening position. Burgoyne managed to achieve this small tactical victory at the Battle of Freeman's Farm at the cost of significant casualties. But these gains were erased when Burgoyne attempted to attack the Americans in the October the 7th Battle of Bemis Heights, and the Americans were able to capture a portion of British defences. And this meant that Burgoyne was forced to retreat and eventually surrender on October the 17th. So the Battle of Saratoga was a major turning point in the American Revolution because it led to foreign intervention in the war. 
Now, despite the fact that France had previously supplied ammunition and guns to the Americans since 1776, Burgoyne's surrender formally brought them into the war and they would formally declare war on Britain in June 1778. The battle also resulted in Spain joining the French in the war against the British. So during the winter of 1778, the American army were able to benefit from the training and discipline of both the Prussian military officer Baron Friedrich von Steuben and Marquis de Lafayette, who were both sent by the French. So this meant that the Americans were able to attack the British, where William Howe had been replaced by Sir Henry Clinton on the British side, at Monmouth in New Jersey. Now this battle effectively ended in a draw because the Americans held their ground, but Clinton was able to get his army and supplies safely to New York. But after the Treaty of Alliance between France and America, American and French planners organised an attempt to capture Newport in Rhode Island. However, this attack failed and it did lead to a settlement phase in the north. But from 1779 to 1781, the Americans did suffer a number of setbacks, including the defection of Benedict Arnold to the British in 1780, after George Washington had given him his fullest trust and placed him in command of the fortifications at West Point in New York. There were also a number of serious mutinies within the Continental Army. Now before this, in September to October 1779, the joint French and American invasion of Georgia had failed to capture the city of Savannah, and this was called the Siege of Savannah. This was followed by the British capture of Charleston in South Carolina in May 1780. However, in December 1780, Nathaniel Green replaced Horatio Gates as the American commander in the South, and under his command, the Americans got a victory against the British at Calpent in South Carolina on January the 7th, 1781. So now we need to look at the end of the American Revolution. As by the autumn of 1781, Green's American forces had managed to force Charles Cornwallis, who was the British, and his British forces to Virginia's Yorktown Peninsula. Now, supported by a French army commanded by General Jean Baptiste de Rochambeau, Washington moved against Yorktown with a total of around 14,000 soldiers and a fleet of 36 French warships. So three weeks into the siege of Yorktown, the position of Cornwallis became untenable and he was forced to surrender. Now as he was unwilling to do this himself, he claimed that he was ill and he sent General Charles O'Hara in his place instead. George Washington had his second in command, Benjamin Lincoln, accept Cornwallis's surrender. So a triumph at Yorktown essentially secured American independence. However, British forces still remained stationed around Charleston and the powerful army in New York. Now, they would only start their removal of troops from Charleston and Savannah in late 1782. British and American negotiators in Paris signed preliminary peace terms in November 1782, and on September 3, 1783, Great Britain formally recognised the independence of the United States in the Treaty of Paris. So, thank you for watching this video, and see you soon. Bye.